If you're a new filmmaker that started making films within the last four to five years, in my opinion, you're slightly fucked. This film is purely created for filmmakers that want to learn how to tell a compelling story. There's definitely a space for filmmakers that want to express themselves through beautiful imagery. I'm in no way bashing that with this film. Every single day I'm learning and I'm collaborating with people. These are just some of the tricks and tips that I've learned along the way. And if you are one of those filmmakers that are feeling slightly fucked, well then let me help you unfuck yourself. Brew. Every now and then you get a film that's so infectious it literally reshapes an entire decade of filmmaking. Around four to five years ago, an Italian filmmaker, Leonardo D'Alessandri, created a piece of film called The Watchtower of Turkey that bent the minds of many creative people. It was the first time so many seamless transitions, hyperlapses and rapid fire montages accompanied by an emotive score were seen work so beautifully within one four minute online film. This kind of film is known as the Purple Cow of its era. So uniquely different to a curious eye that it literally cannot be replicated. The problem is, everyone tried to replicate it. There are even transition packs used to this day called Turkey Transitions, the Watchtower effects, and then others disguised beneath different names. This is what started the movement I call the Overstyled Lazy Idea Era. Films that just look really pretty with no substance whatsoever. If you want to stand out, one should never develop an idea for a film based off of a film. There are, however, a handful of filmmakers that have been influenced by this movement, except their content has progressed beyond just being a bunch of pretty pictures in a world filled with pretty pictures. They have the most important part of any film, an idea. One of these filmmakers being Matt Comer. Matt's work is visually remarkable. He does things with a camera I don't even understand. I am, on the other hand, a practical filmmaker, and my style is woven around each narrative. I flew him to New York to spend a couple of days with him and get into the mind of a visual storyteller, and along with my skill set as a director, develop five simple steps on how to create a film that will be remarkable in a way that's meaningful to your audience. Yo, I'm coming. Okay, we have from sunrise to sunset to come up with some sort of an idea and film it. Okay, buzzed, yeah? One of the most important parts about developing an idea is leaving your ego at home. Rather try and focus on an idea that's useful, something that's beneficial for people. Entertainment is hugely beneficial. I believe that everyone is a product of their upbringing and current surroundings. Therefore, we have thousands of unhatched ideas in our mind that we just need to find the right outlet for. That being through looking at art, people watching, reading a book, or just rambling with a mate. Okay, this part is clearly reenacted. Bru, just for me saying this. Got you. I have an idea. What's that? Why don't we make a film about making a film? Bro, that's a good idea. There's an app called The Most Dangerous Writing App, which is pretty great for writing a stream of conscious thought. From there, I go straight into research to make sure that what I'm talking about is correct. Once you have the idea written down, you need to write a narrative structure, even if it's loose. I use three acts to tell my stories. My three acts work differently to the ones you know. They are impact, which is the reason to watch the film right until the end. Two, speaking open and honestly with the audience. And three, persuasion which is the climax, it's an emotion. You should always leave the audience with a feeling. Now that you've written your script, you need to film this thing, which isn't so hard if you've literally written yourself a to-do list that the professionals call a shot list. This is super important. The reason I always write a script or shot list and why it's super important to stick to your idea is because of a term called location sickness. This is when you go out to shoot your specific idea but then get swayed by something that looks pretty or beautiful. And then try and embed it into your film somehow which at the end of the day doesn't actually make sense. You have to put your idea first. 
Improv filmmaking is important, yes. But sometimes locations can throw you off because, well, locations are pretty and we filmmakers at the end of the day. And then when it comes to production, I almost always have another filmmaker shooting with me. This week being Matt. What's up? Where we knock off every part of the script together, bit by bit. But most importantly, have a laugh. Filmmaking is supposed to be fun, not snobby art. I'm gonna pass over to Matt here, who's like a wizard with this shit. He is editing this piece and it would only really make sense if he spoke about this process. One of the most important aspects of a well-polished edit is being able to cut your imagery in a way that evokes an emotion from your viewer. A well-crafted visual story has the ability to activate the subconscious of your audience's mind and make them feel a certain way, even though they might not know why just yet. I like to reference the Coolish Shot effect a lot to illustrate this point. The idea is that an expressionless man is shown first on screen in succession with three images. The first being a cup of soup, the second a girl in a coffin, and third a woman. What happens when these images are shown in a deliberate order is that the viewer will bring their own emotional reaction to the sequence. This then can influence the audience's perception of what is actually happening. This is the foundation of cinema, but more specifically editing. You need to understand the human mind in such a way that you can seamlessly connect a visual to a feeling on command. Oh, jeez, bro, that was an holly. Oh my. This is the hardest part of any film, releasing your film to an audience for them to judge freely. It takes a large level of confidence, but it definitely gets easier with time the more you start to believe in your own work. But first you need to create a thumbnail and a title. This is all you really have to get somebody to click on your film and to watch it. Maybe ask yourself this, would you click on a plain looking thumbnail if you had no idea who the filmmaker was behind the visual? How important is the title of a film to you? Is clickbait irritating? This is a question for the audience. Try to find the perfect balance with never lying, but by slightly bending the truth in order to spark some form of interest. Like now, which is a trick we call lens whacking, where we're recording in flares for Matt to edit with that looks really rad and will make for a really interesting image. It's something that we're shooting, but it's not really a crucial part of the film. So, but you tell me, is that irritating? Now comes for the biggest adrenaline rush, clicking the upload button. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Just a quick update. From next week, I'm going to be speaking about the film with 100 filmmakers from 100 different countries, which is super exciting. Can't believe the amount of content I've received and how many brilliant filmmakers there are. Also, another update, merch. We sold out of merch almost in the first day, which is incredible. That was the first generation brew merch. So what we've decided to do is create another range. So go check that out. I'll put the link in the description. Then, Matt, brew come stand here. Thank you, homie. Yeah, of course, bro. That's that was such a, awesome. That was a good video. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Okay. This is, why is this the hardest part? <laughs> okay, let's go again. Okay. Thank you, bro. That was awesome. Yeah, of course. That was the first time I've collaborated with another filmmaker like this. I'm probably going to be doing it a lot more. So, for now, go check out Matt's work. It's truly awesome. As always, you're awesome, bro. And I'll see you next week, Wednesday.